hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Please subscribe to this podcast. If you like what I do, please leave a review. And if you'd like to support this free service to cover the costs, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. The link's on the website. Now, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody, as you doing? You alright? You alright? So today is Thursday. The uh, don't know what day it is. Thirtieth, yeah, it's the thirtieth of January, twenty twenty. 2020, 2020, 30th of January, and tomorrow, the 31st of January, we, um, Britain leaves the European Union. Brexit actually happens, so hey. And I've got no interest in talking about that. I just thought I'd mention it. (laughs) It's just one of those things that's been going on for years and years. (sighs) And, uh, yeah. So, yesterday... You know, I like to talk about stats, you know, me and my stats. I actually had, yeah, over 5,000 downloads yesterday. 4,800 and something the day before. About 4,700 the day before that. So, yeah, the, um, the podcasts are getting... A lot more listeners and downloads than ever before, really. So that's uh, pretty groovy. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, It's not just this podcast. It's the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis, the Relaxation. (laughs) I'm laughing because of one that I did today. Uh, the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks, and the sleep hypnosis weekly, plus the two insomnia record podcasts that I have now earlier, a few hours ago, I did a um, a recording for the relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety podcast. And it's a mixture of things that I do. Sometimes I'll talk about a thing. Uh, let's say a uh, subject might be asking for help. Uh, or another time I might do a standard, I say standard, but you know, a relaxation session where I'm just saying, you know, focus on your legs, focus on your knees, me, 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 and just doing the, a relaxation session, where I'm just talking, and the person can just listen, and I want to do more of those as well, because, um, I think they're really useful. Other times, I will do a offer like an exercise, a technique, an exercise that you can do. Um, I 
had one the other day where you look in the mirror for five minutes and you make really big um, excessive exaggerated smiles in the mirror to yourself for five minutes and you set your timer you do it for five minutes and then you stop and uh, that's just you know so that's one of the things I do so there's lots of different things I do within the podcast and it's now I think 80 I don't know it's 81 recordings I think and that's had 80,000 downloads um, so anyway <laughs> anyway today I did a recording which had me singing so if you fancy a laugh and you want to hear me singing then have a listen although it's not you know I'm not doing it as a comedy uh, recording um, but it might be humorous to some people and and I had this idea and I thought because you know with things like stress or any kind of emotional thing that's going on we can interrupt those the flow of those emotions in so many different ways and sometimes if you do something that's kind of absurd I'm not saying that singing is absurd but in certain circumstances singing would be a kind of ridiculous thing to do perhaps and so yeah I just it was quite a funny recording really in a sense Uh, but that podcast has really taken off it's become on a daily you know from a daily angle one of my most popular podcasts so there you go but this one yeah and the deep sleep whisper they're all they're all in their own mind in their own mind in their own way uh not their own audience just like this one isn't necessarily going to it might not appeal to someone that wants to listen to um, a whisper like someone whispering just like the whisper sessions might not be for someone that wants to hear me just rub it on about nothing for an hour so you know each one has its um, value I suppose you know but anyway I just I'm constantly saying thank you aren't I but you know thank you for listening but I don't think is there nothing wrong with that really is there you know it's like oh it's not like I'm begging you to listen I'm just saying thank you for listening so that's that's oh, please listen because that doesn't seem any point in that because you're you're listening <laughs> you know what I mean it's like please listen to my recordings but we are unless you hear me say it if you don't hear me say it it means you're not listening but then you won't hear me say it if you're not listening so yeah I don't know I suppose that's what advertising is for so what I thought I would do is well first of all just tell you on I bought a bag today um, and some tra- well, some tracksuit bottoms from a friend who um, and they're not been worn never been worn and so I got those and then I got a bag as well and I was going to use the bag because I don't actually have a bag I just use carrier bags which are a bit well not ideal you know what I mean not not great and this bag fits on my back you know it's got straps and stuff the problem is um, probably about well for the last few months Andre's green and brown bag that he's had for years he loves that bag 
every now and then he gets caught in it. He now gets caught in the, the lining of the bag because he's worn it out. It's just worn, you know, it's just because he's in there and he's scratching and he's basically, he's torn the inside quite a bit. And every now and then he gets caught and he can't get out. It's happened a few times, but it happened the other day for the last time. I thought, no, because what happens if I'm not here and it happens? He's, I said, it happens a lot, didn't I? So I thought, nah, nah, nah. So I uh, decided to get rid of the bag. So I took the bag away from him. I left him with the jumper, the blue jumper that he loves, that he has inside the bag. But I took the bag away and he was not happy. And he's been looking for the bag. And sometimes he's just there. He just he just lays down on the floor near where the bag was and just looks at me. And I say to him, look, Mr. Bag is gone. He's gone. And he didn't he just wasn't happy with that. And I had in this new bag, this bag that I got, that I bought, well, I got given it, but someone owed me some money, so they gave gave me a bag. And I put the bag on a chair, on a chair, and the strap was hanging down the chair, and Andre saw the strap, and he was trying to get to it. I mean, he wasn't trying too hard because when he really decides he wants something, he never quits. He'll, he'll keep going for hours, seriously. So he clearly wasn't that bothered. But I reckon once I went to bed, he'd probably spend a bit of time. He'd find he can get onto that chair if he wants to. And the chair, that, that chair is the one that's going to be in the, uh, the recording studio once, or the shed, the garden shed. Once it's actually soundproofed and everything, that chair will be in there for me to sit in. But at the moment I'm taking it out because, well I'm hoping to get the, um, the soundproofing foam to start putting it in there but it's going to take a little while before I can afford to get that but once it's, once it's done it's going to be so good because even earlier even though it's the middle of the night I sat in my bedroom Andre was asleep in there and I thought I know I'll take I have to do what I do around him because if he's running around I can't do it a whisper recording I can do this recording I can do other stuff, but I can't do something where I'm being really, I don't know, it's its different, you know, a whisper one, you really hear background sounds a lot more, um, and also, I think with quite a few people that listen to this recording actually like Andre. And I've seen him on video in the past, and um, you know, it's a picture of him on the podcast picture itself, picture of Andre. I mean, he he is the mascot for this podcast, so therefore, you hearing his little feet running around and onto the paper, and um, you know, he's kind of part of this. He's a part of the podcast. But he's not part of the whisper recordings. So I, so I closed the, this, the front door, or the, the living room door. I closed the kitchen door so that none of the, the sort of fridge noise and stuff would be at a minimum. I closed the bedroom door. I made sure the windows were closed. And this was probably about two o'clock in the morning. And I was sitting there. All I can hear is the train. 
I was like, why is this so loud? I don't live anywhere. Well, I suppose I do live near a railway track, but I don't. You know, if you know what I mean, it's it's not like a five minute walk. It's it's quite a quite a distance to get to the track. It's yeah, a good ten minute, maybe fifteen minute walk from here to the railway track. So I wouldn't have thought it'd be so loud, but it was, and I'm just like, oh, I wish my wish my recording studio was all set up but then I haven't had it that long um, I think I got it in October so it's only three months and you know with Christmas had other things to pay out for Christmas presents and all that stuff and you know just generally uh you know, the winter, the bills are more, aren't they? Electric, gas, and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I am going to... Oh, I'm so looking forward to getting that shed kitted out. I'm going to I'm gonna really do a good job on it. And it's going to be... Hopefully, it will be completely silent. So when I make my whisper recordings or making... Um, like the sleep hypnosis weekly that's one that I'd want to do in the recording studio or in the shed the recording shed another one would be if I was doing a relaxation recording where it's just like a hypnosis session rather than me going through a you know a technique or uh, I was going to say homework but you know giving someone uh, a task that they can do that will be useful and so yeah it's and I think once it's done once it's there once I feel comfortable in there I might start to do more stuff you know if I can do if I can make recordings during the day without interruption without any kind of sounds then I might not wait until the middle of the night and make all my recordings I might I'll probably still be awake at night because that suits me better but I might start making recordings maybe in the afternoon you know maybe 3, 4, 5 o'clock and spread them out which means I could end up doing more than three recordings a day. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Or maybe even make some ahead. You know, it's just... Uh, I think it would be nice to have a few spare recordings. So, you know, if, if I'm unable to make recordings for a while, for a few days or a week or something, I can still upload some... You know, here's one I recorded earlier. That kind of situation. So, I might do that. You know, if I decide to go on a cruise, travel the world or something, maybe <laughs> I'd still be making recordings. Imagine how cool that would be. i say, well, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. You know the website by now. I don't need to keep telling you the website. Oh, you don't know the website? Okay, jasonnimmer.com. I've only said it about 2,000 times on these recordings. And I'll be there on a big cruise liner, big cruise ship in the Mediterranean. Just saying, you're welcome to let me bore you to sleep. Let me tell you about what I've done today. I've done nothing. I watched all the people get off the ship to go on the exclusion, whatever you call it. And I stayed here. I stayed at the bar. And I watched them all come back on again. 
I reckon I probably wouldn't go on much of the exclusions that way people go on when they're on these ships so I don't know if technically I could say that I've been to those countries if I haven't actually got off the boat so I might get off just to say that I've been there but I'd probably end up getting on quite well with the staff because I'd just stay on there I don't think I'd probably get off much plus I'd be on my own so I wouldn't have you know I wouldn't really be talking to anyone else other than the staff probably so that'd be quite cool I can make my recordings and maybe at a quiet time I could make the deep sleep whisper ones and you have the sound of the ocean just you know like the natural sounds how amazing would that be in fact if I had some pretty I don't know if I got some better oh, some more improved recording equipment like portable I could actually start recording some of the sounds of the weather and then just having that as something for people to listen to you know just something really relaxing like five hours of the sea and then five hours of the sea and another five hours of the sea unless I like go on planes and I can have five hours of a, a plane engine that probably wouldn't be quite as relaxing or if I'm really lucky on a plane five hours of a baby crying <laughs> uh, no no I would prefer see I I would get on a cruise liner but I would never go on a small boat because I can't swim but for some reason a huge ship I feel safe on a huge ship plus I always find out where the lifeboats are so I always kind of know the exits and I wear the life jackets and all that stuff so I always kind of check for that <clears throat> when I got on a plane for the first time I I remember sort of because I'd been on boats before but never on a plane I've always kind of had a system you know and I was walking around and the, the flight attendant said to me excuse me JJ I said yeah I said uh, what, are you, what are you doing can I help you what are you doing I said I'm just looking for something he said what were you looking for I'm looking for the parachutes she said what I said I'm looking for the parachutes where where do you keep the parachutes? Because I'd quite like to just put it on now, you know. And uh, she said, no, there's no parachutes. I said, what? She said, no parachutes. I said, what are you talking about, Stewardess? She said, no, there's no parachutes. How can that be possible? She said, well, no, <laughs> there isn't. So I wasn't madly impressed with that. She said, oh, but we do have life jackets. Okay. So this is, you have life jackets. So I suppose, I mean, if you, if you, if your company had ships, would they offer people parachutes on the ships? She said, no, that's silly. I said, that's silly. So if I'm 100 foot in the air, going 500 miles an hour, what's a life jacket? What, what use is that going to be for me? Unless, you know, unless thing, this thing attached is actually a magical whistle, you know, turns it into a parachute. She said, no, it's not. It's not magical at all. I said, okay. She said, can you sit down? And I swear, I don't know if, um, I imagine every part of the plane that I traveled on the first time has been disassembled. 
because it's a long time ago. What, the plane won't even exist. Not even the fabric of, on any of the chairs, none of the glass. It will all have been broken apart and in some landfill probably by now, or melted down, because it was back in 1989. 99, 2009, 2000, so 31 years ago, so, um, and my first trip was to Spain, Malaga, and I've talked about it in the past, I actually had, I went there for the afternoon, and the, the lady, seriously, this is, I say elderly, but I was, what was I, 18 at the time, and elderly to me would probably be anyone over the age of 40, so she may well have not been elderly at all, but uh, mind you, I had a friend, uh, there's someone called Sebastian that used to call me elderly, even though I'm only, you know, early 30s, <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> so he this lady I think she was I don't know she's probably in her 50s 60s but again she might not have been and she said oh if you if you not been on a plane before and I said go away I don't want to talk to you she said what I said no sorry so I just get agitated when I fly she said that was a bit, little, bit more than agitated, wasn't it? That was, that was rude. I said, "Oh, go for just, yeah." She said, "What? What was that?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> she said, "You're very rude." I said, "What you are is, what you is, what you say, what you are is what you say you are." She said, "You didn't, didn't get that right, did you?" I said, "No." I was nervous. She said, "Do you want to have another go?" I said, "Okay." What you say is what you are. She said, that's better. I said, thanks. She said, that's still a bit rude, though. I said, well, you asked me to say it. Yeah, not the first time. Yeah, but you, you encouraged me to say it the second time. She said, technically, it's probably about the sixth time because you were stuttering so badly. I said, stop having a go at me. She said, sorry, sorry. And uh, we had a little cuddle. And uh, she said, she said to me, well, don't worry, I've, I've flown loads of times. And I said to her, how is that supposed to help me? She said, what? I said, how is that, you telling me that you've flown loads of times supposed to help me she said well just letting you know that it's safe oh so you've flown loads of times you're basically saying I've flown loads of times but I've not yet been killed so therefore yeah it's safe no it's safer than safer than uh, driving on a motorway it's safer than driving on a motorway but driving on a motorway is not always the safest thing is it she laughed. I said, besides, I can't drive. That's why it wouldn't be safe. She giggled at that. But I, I said it in a different way, though. I basically, I said, driving on a motorway isn't safe. She said, why is that? I said, I can't drive. So that that was a, a more mildly humorous version. Um, but I didn't think about it until afterwards. And when we came to take, uh, to, yeah, when we came to land, or, well, I didn't land the plane, obviously, but the, the, uh, the pilot landed the plane, and I, she was really nice, she said, I had one hand on the the headrest ahead of me, like the other person's headrest. And she held my hand as we landed. 
and I had a multiple of uh, thoughts go through my head. For some, re for some reason, I was thinking to myself, I was still a virgin, which I was. I was still, I was very, very pure back then. <laughs> I hadn't um, the, you know, the, the 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 act had not been accomplished at that point, and I just so I'm holding her hand and I'm thinking. This might be my last opportunity. And I wasn't very knowledgeable. So I kind of wondered, she's holding my hand. Is this losing my virginity? Because, you know, I always figured that the first time with human contact with a woman would be really scary. And it was. So I said, is this it? But, you know, apparently it wasn't. Technically, you know, regardless of how much pleasure you have, it's not, it's not the, uh, not the actual thing. She held, I held her hand, and I remember I said thank you, and she looked at me because we landed, you know, safely, obviously, and. Uh, no, we crashed, and this is my ghost talking. Ooh, ooh. Um, come back to haunt everyone with podcasts. So I'm holding her hand. I said, thank you. And she had tears in her eyes. And I thought, oh, I've really made a connection with her. Really, you know, there's an emotional connection... Um, maybe she thought of me as like a son or something, and I, you know, I could definitely have. I was in need of sort of a mother figure, really. So I thought, oh, maybe this is this is going to be a lifelong friendship, like really deep, um, kind of love, you know, a deep uh, friendship, you know, going forward. She had these tears in her eyes and I said, I feel like you want to say something to me. And she nodded her head and I said, go on. You don't, you know, can just say it. Don't, don't feel embarrassed. Just, just, you say it first. I feel the same. You say it first. And she said, you let go of my hand. And I did. I said, oh yeah, okay. And uh, apparently, it took about nine operations to fix her hand. She, you know, I said to her, like, "You shouldn't have squeezed mine so hard." If, if you know, that's probably why it did that. She said, "No, I think it's the other way around." And the thing is, for some reason, she didn't want to see me again. And the other thing is the, the headrest where I was gripping on with my left hand, I left a mark. It was literally there was an indent of my fingers in the headrest. Now what I didn't realise is there was someone sitting in that chair. I didn't realise. I looked over, and at the first as I walked off, I thought that chair look that that the back of that chair looks like someone's face. Then I realised it was, like I'd squashed their head into the chair. I couldn't believe it. We laughed. Yeah, so it was quite good. It was all right. I mean, I've been on how many planes? One. Uh, 
Wow. Isn't it weird? You know when you see the news? So I watch the, the BBC news at night because they go more in-depth and, you know, worldwide. It's not all kind of stuck into like a half-hour thing. And it just came on. Every, every night they talk about they have this week in history. They do it all throughout the week, but they do a different one each week. And, you know, if it's like the Berlin Wall coming down and I can't think of any others. Gandhi eating a sandwich, I don't know, different things. And the, just then I had something that happened in 1986. See, my memory of it happening was earlier, probably about 1984. Not 1986, 1984. Because I remember coming home from karate. I think it was, it's either Tuesday or Thursday night. So was, those was the two nights that I went. And it was a different school to the one that I actually went to. Because where I lived, there was two high schools. The high school that I used to go to is now closed. It's uh, some polytechnic thing. Oh man. Um, so I'm just seeing something on. Um, I think I'm going to have to become a vegetarian. I think I'm going to have to. Uh, never mind. So this... Um, this... event that happened, I was like... That was 1984, surely, or 1985, but it turned out it was 1986, so I just don't, I don't know, just, it's weird, it's like, well, I'm pretty sure it was 1985 or 1984, because the song, um, Remember the Eurythmic song? Laying with my heart to No one on earth can be like this It's all we do the only keys There must be an angel Playing with my heart Ooh ooh And Maybe I was wrong, maybe that song wasn't earlier. Maybe it was 1986. But it would have been early 1986 because I was 15, I was still at school, and I left school in April 1986. So it must have been January, February or March. Wow. And so I went to this high school. It's different from the one I went to. But both my brothers went there. But they'd, they'd um, yeah, they'd left school by the time I'd started doing karate there. Both of them. But it wasn't, it wasn't like a huge distance away from where I lived either. You know, it was it was further than the school I went to. I suppose it was double the distance, but it still wasn't a long way. Because I lived in town. I lived literally in one street away from the town centre where I was where I lived at that time, which was 
it's quite a good place to live really but it's only a small place anyway so everywhere was quite close although I did know people that were so lazy that they would get a bus instead of walk for, instead of walking for 20 minutes they'd get a bus and I'm talking about young healthy people who were able to walk they just couldn't be bothered and I, I never did that ever apart from when I did yeah, it's the only time I did do that is when I did it. And this um, school that I used to go to to do the karate, I used to walk up there. Sometimes I get a lift home because um, some of the karate people were adults or, you know, they were sort of 17, 18, 19, 20. They had cars, so they'd give me a give me and maybe some of the other kids a lift back into town so that was good and especially when it was raining plus I had this big bag full of like my kit full of uh, pads uh, hand pads foot pads groin protector and probably head guard as well I don't know I can't remember if we, if we had head guards back then and um, so I had this big, it wasn't a heavy bag, but it was had a, it was definitely full. It wasn't heavy, but it, you know, it had a fair amount of content inside of it. And so I used to walk up, and there was this entrance. The thing is, the entrance, um, so this road, so if you went down, I'll give you an exact, um, let me have a look. Yeah, so if you came out of my house, where I used to live at that time, turn right, then turn left, because there was a road there, turn left, which heads into the town. And then just keep, or cross the road and walk down that road all the way down to the end turn right and it takes you over a little bridge then turn left and follow that road all the way around and that literally ends up parallel to the school where you just basically get to the end of that road oh no no it doesn't no, it doesn't at all. What am I talking about? No, there is a road that does that. What road is it? Oh, okay. Not that road. You walk up a bit further around because there was a flower shop. And, yeah, walk around. And then there's a road which, if you walk all the way up, it ends up opposite the school. I think, is it Seaton Road? I, I forget. I don't know but anyway it ended up and it was I mean to get down that road it's all about 10 minute walk but it was like one straight road so it was alright it was okay so I'd walk there get there and go through the main gates although there weren't really gates it was just a gap you know, there was gates, but the other each side, but it was just like a, a so cars could get in. In fact, buses used to go in there and pick up kids and take them. I don't know where they took them, but buses used to pick up the kids sometimes. Uh, and so I'd go in, go round to the front of. the school sometimes well generally I'd be there first I don't know why probably because I was enthusiastic maybe um, is that weird I said enthusiastic rather than enthusiastic rather than enthusiastic enthusiastic yeah. anyway I was um I used to get there early yeah I did and we did this 
sometimes I'd have to wait outside for either I was going to say my boss but my instructor Paul to turn up and he's like sensei teacher um, I'm not sure if I used to call him sir I might have done because there's, there's an etiquette when it comes to um, like martial arts you know you bow you bow as you enter the hall and you bow as you leave the hall or the room that you're practicing in even if it's a gym in a school you still it's like a sacred space during that period of time and it's quite weird right because when I was at school after being there for a while I'd go to school and go to the gym and I felt my myself wanting to bow before going into the gymnasium even though I'd never trained in that school the school that I was going to the gymnasiums are practically the same same like wooden floor and same kind of um, sweaty smell you know so it was, it's weird anyway I um, I'm trying to think of the directions towards where the Uh, we go in I mean I did used to know the way towards the gym because I used to go there for a couple of years so I can't remember the exact way but I know that when I got in there the hallway bit which led to the gym the gymnasium see the changing rooms were on the left and the gym and doorway was on the right but I think there was two doorways because there's a big old gym so I think there's two entrances but we only use one entrance um, and sometimes the other hole, hole the other um, gap can be the doorway can be uh, an exit you know depends so in, in restaurants See, I don't know how they work it with restaurants, you know. You know, sometimes you've got the... They're both using the exit and the entrance at the same time. And I just... It's like, how do they do it? Without, like, banging into each other. I remember my friend when I worked worked at one of my places and he'd always say don't ever I don't want to see anybody going into the kitchen empty handed or coming out of the kitchen empty handed I said what about the toilet he said what I said well do you want us to come out of the toilet empty handed is that okay well I've got to have a hand, hand of poo he said no that's not what I'm saying at all please don't do that I said okay so will put the people off their dinner. I said, oh, all right then. I'm just trying to help. He said, well, that wasn't really helpful, was it? Luckily I like you, otherwise you'd be sacked. I said, well, you know, you love me, don't you? You love me. He said, no, I tolerate you. I said, oh, that's rude. He said, no, it's not, it's true. And he said, don't ever leave, don't ever walk into the kitchen empty-handed. But he didn't mean, uh, like, don't make sure you've got a book in your hand or, you know, Paddington DVD or, you know, holding a blamange in each hand. It's about making sure that you're taking back, like, an empty glass from the table, uh, an empty plate, cutlery, anything to make sure you're always clearing and bringing stuff back to the kitchen and if you're leaving the kitchen or leaving the bar take something with you to take it to a table so you're always making use of that journey so I thought that was quite good advice actually in life so I do that now 
So when I'm indoors, which is most of the time really, so if I'm going to go into the kitchen to let's say go to the fridge, what I do is I look around to see if there's anything I can take into the kitchen whilst I'm heading in that direction. And that's what I do. I, I think, oh, I'll take that plate in there. So I carry the plate into the kitchen. Then I go to the, to the fridge and I'll bring something out with me. And then the next time I go, maybe, maybe if I'm going to a toilet, I think, well, I can take something into the kitchen now and then go to the toilet. So there might be uh, a wrapping, some, you know, some by wrapper. I don't mean a wrapper wrapping. A little M and M sitting on a table, swearing. I don't mean that. He's a genius. He can rhyme swear words. <laughs> no, he is a genius. And you got. I kind of take stuff in, so I'm constantly. I like to think of myself like an ant, um, like a little working ant. You know, I kind of make use of those those journeys that I make those little journeys to the bathroom to the bedroom to the front door it's like okay what can I take with me yeah I remember the first time I ever went to karate it was my friend Stefan or Stefan he his brother was going and we were just chatting. I think it was science lesson, and I was bored, and you know, I, I never did any work at, in class ever. Uh, from pretty much from the first year onwards, especially after the second year. After after the first year, I didn't bother. So for at least four years of school, I didn't. I put no effort into any of the classes at all. Didn't do anything. Did no work. And. The my friend said, "My well, stuff." I said to him, "Oh, what are you doing tonight then?" Which doesn't sound like something that I would say. So he must have just brought it up in conversation. Uh, because you know what I did at night was just go home and watch telly, and maybe read, and try to avoid the family. So you know, so I just kind of. I watched, yeah, I watched telly. So I, oh, when I got my first television, it was a black and white television when I was about 15. I might have been 14. I might have been 15. I'm not sure. All I know is I loved it. It was probably one of the happiest moments of my life getting that black and white television didn't care that it wasn't colour all I knew was I could now watch television in bed mixing the two things that I loved most in the world other than reading sleeping and watching television the two things you know two out of three things and farting so for all of those things which which I could actually do in bed having that television I mean I'm not even a, I'm not I'm not exaggerating the pleasure that I got from it and I was, it's quite weird because I started going to bed earlier and earlier. And I said, like, oh, I was so, oh, so tired. Oh, I feel like I'd go to bed now. It's only three in the afternoon, Jason. What are you doing? I was like, well, oh, because it was so good. I could get away from them all. Didn't have to listen to them. And I didn't have to interact. And I could just go and be in my room and just watch television oh it's lovely it really was nice 
and I'd be up till late at night as well. You know, I think in the last in the last year, pretty much, I think I stopped doing the early morning paper round. I might have still had the evening. Yeah, I think I did still have the evening paper round, but I might have got to the point where I got rid of that as well. Um, I'm not sure. There was a point where I kind of like I sort of semi-retired from all that stuff, and because I've been doing it for a few years, you know, paper rounds and all that stuff. It's just like oh. And getting up early in the morning, I forced myself, but I, I felt tired all day. It's like, ah. Oh. And then I'd get home from school. Well, I wouldn't get home from school. I'd, I think I'd, I'd either go home and then go out straight away to the, and get the, the papers to deliver the papers in the, for my evening round. So I'd have two paper rounds, and then I'd have a weekend paper round, a weekend leaflet delivery, and then have a monthly delivery as well. So I'd just be constantly on my feet or cycling around, delivering, putting stuff in people's letterboxes. And so I did that for a while. In fact, I had more money then than I have now. Really, I had more spendable money when I was about 14 than I do now isn't that weird and um, that television oh I loved it I used to kiss it every night before going to sleep and one of the things I remember most or two things that I remember most about that TV two television shows that I watched that I just loved 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 the first one was MASH and the second one was Cheers now I remember Cheers just just the theme music from that TV show man I just feel really good when I hear it That TV show Cheers has nothing but positive uh, connotations for me. It's completely beautiful. I don't know. It's just it's it's really in my heart. That television show was funny. It was upbeat. The characters were brilliant. The writing was brilliant. The you know, it was just funny as well. It was a great TV show. And I watched it. I didn't watch it right from the beginning because I didn't... I wasn't allowed to stay up that late. But once I got my TV, I, there was no sort of checking up on me. And, uh... I mean, to be fair, to start with, I was a little bit worried that... You know, it's a little... You know when you're a kid and you're sort of trying to read... So I started sort of trying to watch TV by flashlight or by torch so that I have the TV under me bed covers. Then I realised well, I didn't need the torch because the TV has its own light. And then I realised I probably didn't need to have it underneath the quilt or the bed. I couldn't fit it under the actual bed. I tried. So at the end I just left it on the top and didn't get bothered. And it was really good. Oh, and Cheers was on late at night. I say late, probably like maybe 10. Maybe, I think they might have been showing repeats on quite late. Maybe half 11 or 12. And I loved it. And then as I got older, when I kind of reached like sort of 16, 17, I used to watch it every Friday. 18, 19, 20 Cheers was still on so I'd watch it right the way up to the last ever episode and they used to show it on channel 4 
So oh, I love cheers. So Andre was trying to get that bag from the chair, that backpack bag, and I thought, and I'm looking at him and he's lying down on the floor looking at me in his little uh, blue jumper next to him that he does sort of climb inside but it's not the same. So at the end up I gave, I gave in, I got the bag, put his blue jumper on inside it and I put the bag on the floor and he's been sleeping in it for the last three or four hours because he likes he doesn't like the light shining on him when he's asleep he likes to have and he likes that enclosedness he doesn't like to be locked in so he doesn't want the zip done up but he likes it kind of closed at the same time but so he can open it and close it whenever he wants so he's now got his new place. He's asleep in there now. He's got the smell of the of the jumper, which originally was my smell. So he he wanted that because it smelled of me. And I put it in there. He nicked, he actually stole it off me. Uh, so I just let I just let him have it. And he's basically commandeered the bag because he was going to. He was waiting to grab it waiting for me to be out of the room so he could get onto the chair and sort of um because as soon as he gets in it he's he kind of lets off a smell and he makes it his own if you make it's kind of like unusable <laughs> for anything else other than for him he definitely it's almost like when you move into a place and you redecorate maybe put in different furniture different color walls different carpet he just gets into that bag, lets off a stink. And uh, it's kind of the opposite to fumigating. He defumigates it. I think that that's right. So now that bag is now his and I can't go anywhere near it. And if I dare move it, it'll have the ump with me. Seriously, does not like me touching his stuff. You might think I'm joking, but he genuinely does not like me touching his stuff. It's his. And he's making a little noise. Because he knows I'm talking about him, don't you, Andre? So he's happy now. He's got a new bag that's his. Nice little bed for him to sleep in. Now I don't have a bag. So I literally had a bag for two hours. Now I don't. Because he has commandeered it. Bless him. So that's it. Um, I have no idea what I talked about. I talked about something I must have done. Yeah. Anyway, I will be back again tomorrow with more exciting stories. Thank you for listening. Remember, remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.